Cenk started off very rightly talking about how Republicans and Donald Trump seem unhinged by perpetuating these ideas that dogs and cats are being eaten and that that women are having post-birth abortions. And the first thing that I don't I don't know how to how to convey the extent to which when Republicans say this kind of stuff, it does not resonate with normal people. And you seem crazy. And Donald Trump went out there on stage, got laughed at by the entire nation. And then, Michael, you come on here and you do the exact same thing. So please triple down on this, quadruple down on this, make this election, election a referendum on this bogus notion that women are executing their babies after they're born. I beg of you. Brian Tyler Cohen was a guest on Piers Morgan Uncensored, where he joined a panel with Michael Knowles, Jen Uyghur, and Tommy Laren. I previously posted a video focusing on Jen Uyghur's sections of this debate, but this time I want to show you Brian Tyler Cohen's approach. He's a lot calmer and more measured than Jen, but I think he's just as effective in making his arguments. In this video, we'll dive into clips featuring Brian Tyler Cohen, along with some moments from Tommy Laren and Michael Knowles from the show. It's an interesting and engaging debate that's definitely worth a watch. Let's check it out. I don't think he's worked out quite how to do that with, with Kamala Harris. I mean, bring in Brian. I mean, Brian, look, I, I think it was a clear win for her. I think also the fact that Taylor Swift, the biggest pop star on the planet, arguably ever, has come out with such a ringing, emphatic endorsement, when many people thought she may just avoid doing that altogether. Everyone kind of knew her leanings, but they thought maybe, you know, she's with this big, burly NFL guy, uh, very popular in middle America. You know, would she actually show her colours in such an emphatic way? Well, she did, and she chose Kamala's big win night to do it. So a double win, I think, for Kamala Harris, uh, especially with young women who, who, who would have been uh, watching that debate, heard all the abortion stuff, saw Taylor Swift's comments and so on. But, and it's an important but really, this race is absolutely wafer thin. I had Nate Silver from 538 on last week saying it literally is as close as it could possibly be. Do you really think that this will move the, the needle in the race or has it, what it's really done, has it given the Democrats more impetus, particularly after the debate debacle with Joe Biden? Do I really think that Taylor Swift's endorsement, um, where her biggest audience is Gen Z, which is the low, the smallest vote, which is the biggest voting block, but the voting block in which the fewest people vote. And she just posted to millions of people a voter registration link in her Instagram. Do I think that that will have an impact in this election where the margins are probably going to be decided by tens of thousands or just thousands of votes? Absolutely. And I think that you, we should take advantage of every opportunity that we get. It's important to note, too, that Donald Trump forced her hand. This was an unforced error because he was so desperate to lie about uh, accepting her endorsement by posting some AI Swifties for Trump photo. He couldn't help himself but lie. And so that forced her hand in terms of then going out there and saying, look, I, I, I don't know if I would have said anything, but because there was manipulated video, manipulated photos out there, I thought the right course of action was to correct the record and, and let my actual position be known. And so because this guy is incapable of telling the truth, because he has to wield lies on a daily basis, because every time he opens his mouth, he has to spew disinformation and misinformation, he screwed himself here. And so he's the one that's going to be hurt from all of this. Um, but moving back to just something that I think Michael said and Chank said. If you're liking this content, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It makes a huge difference. More videos like this. Now, let's jump back into the video. Chank started off very rightly talking about how Republicans and Donald Trump seem unhinged by perpetuating these ideas that dogs and cats are being eaten and that that women are having post-birth abortions. And the first thing that Michael does when he comes on here is perpetuate these exact claims. Look, you guys can do this and until you're blue in the face. With I don't I don't know how to how to convey the extent to which when Republicans say this kind of stuff, it does not resonate with normal people. And you seem crazy. And Donald Trump went out there on stage, got laughed at by the entire nation. And then, Michael, you come on here and you do the exact same thing. So please triple down on this, quadruple down on this, make this election election a referendum on this bogus notion that women are executing their babies after they're born. I beg of you. We'll see how that works out. This is a really excellent point by Brian Tyler Cohen. If you're interested, the entire episode is about an hour and 16 minutes long. 
and you can watch the full debate on Piers Morgan Uncensored's channel. At one point, Michael acknowledged that while the stories about immigrants eating cats, geese, and ducks, and ducks might not be entirely true, he still suggested that Haitian immigrants are cannibals. Brian Tyler Cohen pointed out how absurd and far-fetched these claims sound to those outside of these conspiracy circles. These ideas seem completely bizarre to people who aren't part of the MAGA cult-like thinking. Okay, Brian, I, just to respond briefly, uh, mm. Brian, I, all I did was uh, refer to the law that uh, Kamala Harris's running mate passed as the governor of Minnesota, the position that he currently holds. So, you know, if you think that sounds crazy or wild or I, I don't know what to yeah, tell you, I, then I, I suppose we're living in different countries. I, I think Cenk we made are. a much better point than Brian just made. And Cenk's point was that Americans want change. They don't like the status quo. And I think that's absolutely true. And I do think this was the missed opportunity of the debate. The status quo is Kamala Harris. Right. She's the vice president. She's been imbued with presidential authority on immigration and other issues. So the, the change agent is Donald Trump here. That's what the debate's got to be about. That's what the election focus has to be about. But the idea that Donald Trump is still portrayed as an outsider by Republicans and MAGA supporters, despite the fact that he served as president for four years, is a bit puzzling. It's interesting how they continue to position him as someone going against the establishment, even though he was very much part of it during his presidency. It just seems contradictory. With Kamala Harris now is, you know, she's she's ended up winning the debate. Fantastic night for her. Good for the Democrats. What does she do now to try and win the election? Fifty odd days to go. I think she continues doing what she did on that debate stage. That debate stage was a microcosm of this actual debate, which was to draw the contrast between somebody who who beats his chest about this about law and order while simultaneously pre presenting himself as a thirty four time convicted felon. Uh, continuing to hammer away at the fact that Donald Trump is responsible for overturning Roe in this country, which is an issue that has killed Republicans, that has cost Republicans elections in Virginia and Ohio and Kansas and Kentucky and Alabama, while Kamala Harris has presented herself as a champion of abortion rights. And and really to put on full display her vision for the future. I think what's what's so interesting is that Tommy brought up this idea that the onus was on Kamala Harris to, to present some, some vision for the future. And if we think about this election, this election, as far as Trump is concerned, is entirely predicated on seeking vengeance for what happened on January 6th. He wants to release the January 6th insurrectionists. This is something we've heard from many MAGA right, including Michael Knowles, ever since Joe Biden stepped back and Kamala Harris took on a more prominent role. They keep saying Trump just needs to focus on policy. But the reality is, Republicans don't seem to have any policies that resonate with average Americans outside the MAGA base. As Brian Tyler Cohen points out, Donald Trump doesn't seem interested in policy at all. His focus remains on seeking revenge against those hills have wronged. Instead of discussing policy, Trump spends his time calling people names and doing what feels more like a stand-up routine, bringing up random things like Hannibal Lecter. Throughout past debates, including the one with Joe Biden, no matter what the topic was, Trump always brought the conversation back to immigration. It's clear he's not focused on meaningful policies. And despite the claims that if Trump just talked about policy, he'd win easily, he's proven time and again that he's incapable of staying on message. Meanwhile, Brian Tyler Cohen consistently presents facts. And while Michael Knowles may sit there smirking, Cohen makes valid points. Trump struggles to discuss policies that connect with everyday Americans, often resorting to conspiracy or extreme rhetoric, particularly on immigration and other divisive acts. As Cohen says in the debate with Piers Morgan, Trump has many self-inflicted wounds. He just can't help but make controversial statements, questioning Kamala Harris's race, which only served to alienate regular. What do you think about Brian Tyler Cohen in comparison to Jen Weiger, who tends to get more heated? It's Cohen presents his arguments in a calm but effective way. Let me know your thoughts. And if you haven't already, I highly recommend checking out the full debate. Here's Morgan Uncensored. It's definitely worth watching.